set? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to thank our Historical Response Committee for standing with us this morning during these rather challenging times for the Hillsborough County School District. We believe we have found Ridgewood Cemetery. We remain committed to respecting the individuals who are buried there and their families. Last month, we learned from a citizen about the possibility of a cemetery at King High School. Within days, an experienced company began surveying two areas on the campus. The first area is on the southern edge of the King High School campus. That area is where the company found clear evidence of burials. Ground penetrating radar found approximately 145 coffins buried three to five feet deep. This entire area has been fenced off since last month when a citizen first alerted us about the possibility of a cemetery. This is consistent with the research we've done in collaboration with the Tampa Bay History Center and other partners. At this time, I'll turn it over to Superintendent Agins who will discuss next steps. Thank you very much, Ms. Schamberger. We have some uh, images created using the ground penetrating radar that we can share with you. We want to personally thank GeoView. Um, they did an excellent job and they were very thorough creating these scans. One image shows an overview of the entire campus. You'll see dozens of light blue lines running north and south. Each one of those lines is one scan using a radar, car radar cart pushed by a technician. You'll see some dark blue lines. Those indicate buried pipes or other underground debris. GeoView drew a large red box around the area that appears to be the cemetery. And the pink boxes were drawn by GeoView to indicate each area where they believe a coffin or suspected burial is located. The other image is a close-up of the area in the south. You can think of this as a slice showing what's buried about five feet below the surface. In the blue areas, there's nothing unusual, but the areas in green and yellow show anomalies under the soil. GeoView used several slices from different depths, along with other radar data. They looked for anomalies in green and yellow that match the orientation and approximate size of suspected burials. And then GeoView placed pink boxes around the spots where they believe a coffin is located. By itself, radar cannot tell exactly what is in the ground. However, based on the pattern of the findings, along with historical records, these appear to be coffins or voids in the soil where a coffin has decayed over time. In fact, there are there, uh, are a, uh, there are agricultural lab facilities and one building. It's an agricultural workshop built in the late 70s. Right now, it's not clear whether more remains or are located underneath that building. We are now making plans to remove that building to verify whether any remains are located below it. Our scanning covered a wide area around the cemetery, so we believe we have found the clear perimeter of the burial ground. We also performed a thorough scan of the second area of interest. We found no evidence of any burials at all in that area. That's the northeast corner of the original campus. Records vary, but they show between 250 and 268 burials at Ridgewood Cemetery. Our scans show evidence of approximately 145 burials. Every record we found indicates all the burials were done in the same small area, taking up about one acre. They were not spread out over different parts of the property. Plus, this is the only area of the property that builders left undeveloped when they constructed the school in 1959. There are some possible reasons for the discrepancy of the numbers, and we will continue researching this with our historians. Some possible explanations include Many of the people buried in the cemetery were infants or small children. This is the case with at least 61 of the burials and possibly up to 77 of them. Their smaller coffins would be difficult to locate by scanning, especially after this much time. 
Even some coffins containing adults may have decayed underground to the point where they can, can't be detected 75 years later. That could happen because of water intrusion into the area or other natural processes. Some remains may be located below the agricultural workshop. Some of the individuals may have been moved to another cemetery. And the radar technology is good, but not perfect. Anomalies in the ground may affect what it can see. So Florida law outlines what happens next. I want to make this very, very clear to everyone. We are notifying the county medical examiner and the state archaeologist uh, this morning. And just as a reference point, we have some representatives in our senator here from that particular district, Senator Hassan and Representative Hart, the uh, King High School rests in their district. Um, the state and, and the medical examiner will take a, the next 30 days to review this report. They can keep possession of the land or decide to turn the land back over to the school district. We will collaborate with those agencies to create a cemetery management plan. It's very important for everyone to know, so the next 30 days, we, we cannot make any determinations what is done. That is in the hands of the medical examiner and the state archaeologist. We will also be scheduling a third meeting of this historical response committee. In that meeting, we will discuss ideas from our community around the proper way to memorialize these individuals, how to best care for this physical space, and what learning opportunities exist for students at King High School and elsewhere to learn about the history represented by these individuals. The focus on our discussion today, because after this particular briefing, we will move directly into our committee. We will not take questions right now at this particular moment in time. Those will be available after our committee. Uh, we're going to ask the Historical Response Committee to give their initial uh, reaction and any clarifying questions. And second, we'll talk about how the members of this committee may want to go about gathering information from um, their constituents in preparation for our next meeting. But I want to reiterate fact that over the next 30 days, we can't make any determinations within our school district what we do until we hear word back from the medical examiner and the state archaeologist. At uh, this uh, time, I want to thank you for this part of the briefing. We are going to transition to our table and begin our committee meeting. Thank you. To where the podium is? Yeah. I'm going to move the podium. You guys are going to come up there? Yes? Yeah. Thank you again, everyone, for being here this morning. 
quite an emotional day for us here uh, in the Hillsborough County School District and certainly for the community. A lot to take in this morning. Very, very emotional. So what I like to do is kind of just open up the committee and the table for discussion, um, reactions, um, any clarifying questions or concerns that you may have <coughs> regarding the information that was given this morning and uh, potentially regarding the next steps moving forward, although we know that for the next 30 days there's not much we can do, but we certainly would we welcome you to um, have that discussion. So uh, please, uh, Representative Park. Good morning. I'm very disturbed by the fact that we have no data more individuals. It's almost as if we have a missing African American community that we've just been buried everywhere throughout our city. And that's very disheartening. And it burns my heart to know that that has happened at King High School. I don't know how children will be directly impacted by having a cemetery on their campus and having not known that it's there and how it's going to directly impact them. I don't know if you all are going to have to provide some services for some kids that might find it difficult to deal with. But from the state, I want you all to know that I am fully committed to doing whatever it is that we need to do to help make get this memorialized properly. Now, I do all know that we did this new bill and we are open to doing amendments. So now, after today, I'm beginning to wonder if we may need to increase the dollar amount that we are proposing in lieu of the fact that we now buy a second burial cemetery, not even knowing how much is still over at Rome yet. So I will have that conversation with both Senator Cruz and Senator Luzon, and then we'll decide how we move forward on the bill. Do we stop the bill for this session, or do we just you know, put out an arbitrary number because that's going to be important, I think. I, I, so I don't know what do you think. I don't think you stopped the bill. It's going to be a 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 bill. It's going it's going to probably, I would not stop the bill this session until we get out of California. Mm -hmm. And then the next session, if we find out that we're going to have to the process. Mm -hmm. That would be my suggestion. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with what you're saying, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and would add that tragedy can be kind of history, or should I say, death, so needs to be told and it's up to us to do it. These were a people and family that was covered over and they're more likely. This just underscores the point. And I think it's incumbent upon us to make this tragedy a triumph to tell their story and tell us about it. I know we opened this meeting up, but after this development that we've heard, I think we have a bunch of ministers around the table. going forward 
that we don't handle this just as business as usual. These were precious souls yeah. that need to be respected. That's my question. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have a uh, question. I, I, I appreciate us talking about what's going to happen going forward, but how does this happen and who is at fault? Like, I'm interested in knowing, even if it means you know, holding someone accountable 20, 30 years later, I'm interested in knowing how this happened, what happened to the records, why this occurred, and why we are where we are today. I would hope that that's a component of what we do and talk about in addition to how we treat this going forward. Madam Chair, uh, do you anticipate uh, any lawsuits uh, going forward? I know it's a little premature at this time, uh, but just like uh, Sean said, someone has to be held accountable. I mean, our, our focus has been on making this right. And, and so um, things of that nature may occur. Our, what's in our control right now is to do exactly what Reverend Roundtree says, is make sure we bring back dignity uh, to these individuals. Uh, make sure we engage our students. Um, thank you, uh, Representative Hart, for bringing that up with our students. They're at King High School at 1030 today. Their families, uh, teachers, receive this message. Um, at the same time, the community received this message. We do uh, know that our students probably need some services around this, so we'll make sure that those services are available to the students at King. Uh, we also know that the King students, as students all across the school district, they, they need a voice in this um, so that they uh, they start to have some um, some ownership of some solutions for the, for their future and take some control of their, of their future and how people are treated with dignity in this community. And so I'm, we're looking forward. I know we have, um, we have uh, 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 Dr. Um, Oh, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Holt here with us today with, in our supervisor for social studies, and he will help to lead that uh, for our school district. But I will tell you that um, students are going to be part of it. And that's going to be a very important thing. Any component, this is a learning opportunity. Yeah. And a component of that learning opportunity, in my opinion, is how this happened yeah. and why it continues to happen to people that look like myself yeah. and others around this table. And why the only burials that we find that we are finding unmarked and uh, grown over and ignored are hawks. And so I, I think a component of this has to be why is this happening, how is this happening, and, and even if this is a long time in the past, we need to figure out the records and look at it. I'd be interested in that being a part of this learning opportunity. It will absolutely be part of it. Yeah. Oh, this also speaks to uh, uh, another platform that I think we uh, will need to will be part of our overall.
that never got the chance to see uh, because of health care, because of uh, food or nutrition issues, because of who knows uh, the wide range of factors that were at play. What we do know is this, that the families couldn't afford to honor them the way they wanted to. So our challenge is to embrace this moment and to understand that we've got some education to do and some reminder that this community for all the tall buildings and all the wonderful uh, things that we look to today, uh, it's only a community because we care about the least. And, these, and this location is about those who are the least. There's going to be more of this stuff. The gentleman that does his research, I understand he does it all day and night. That's all he does. There, I brought up Fort Tampa. Uh, Fort Tampa is sitting itself. At the time of the African I understand that he has found something in, in, Port, Tam in Port Tampa here that we've been coming for. So, as we write this history and teach it in our schools, it's going to build on and more and more of what we find. But I think this committee, right now, even though we can't do anything for the next month, uh, those of us that are in this committee need to find out exactly what we need to do from our constituency honoring elders that, that are out there, not only in, in, uh, at Lucas Park, but out here at King High School in those areas to come. I know that the school district is, is uh, focusing on King High School, but this committee is going to probably have to have more to deal with than King High School, because that's probably more important. And the responsibility is to educate those young people out there what happened and why this happened. Even if it hurts, even if it hurts as to why it happened to African Americans, let me just speak on that as well. And I know Sean's question is an actual question. It's not rhetorical, but you know, my response to that is we know why this happened. Certainly back in that day, profits were put over people, especially people that look like you and I. And so this, this district, um, although the current administration, no one knew about this, um, we're certainly thankful for the citizen who brought this to our attention, holds complete responsibility. Uh, the superintendent of the district, we're going to make sure that uh, this is righted. And um, in fact, to Commissioner Miller's point, uh, the superintendent, at the request of this last committee meeting, has um, already kind of put together a quasi cemetery management plan. And we've started looking at records of some of our schools um, to see if the same thing can't, it has been found. And so from our last committee meeting, we've already started that work so we can get ahead of it. And so we are searching all the schools, certainly and predominantly African American or black areas to see if we can find anything. I mean, they're digging back through decades and decades of records. Um, it's tedious work though, because even looking, even knowing about Ridgewood, looking back through decades and decades of records, I mean, that's the, it's like finding a needle in the haystack about this cemetery. So, um, but we are committed to making sure that um, if and when, I guess, if the question this happens again, that we're prepared to respond accordingly. Um, but the district is responsible, and we accept responsibility for what has happened at Ridgewood, and we're going to make sure that it's right. No, and, and I'm sorry. I, I appreciate that. I was more interested in the purchase at the time the land was purchased and why it might have been mislabeled, and I'm, I'm interested really in the concrete nature in addition to we know why. Uh, I'm interested more in the concrete how it actually happened with regard to the transfer of property and all that, but I appreciate that. Yeah, that was my one question was that, uh, Councilman Bruce, how where is the city? Where is the city in this process? You've got a report. You've got a report. Do you come back that I asked for uh, all of <laughs> any type of records or documents to, to, to originate back? But I think more importantly, uh, since we have uh, the elected officials here at this table, I think more important to look at what are our ordinances and laws within Hillsborough County and at the state level, and we, they need to change the script uh, to prevent this type of thing from happening again. So that's something that we, this community will also <coughs> put on a, a bucket list and also the elected officials will get as well. Madam Chair, do you anticipate having a public meeting? Yes, absolutely. Listen, the uh, community is very important in this process. Um, that's why we have you at the table, those of you who have broad reach into the community. So a couple of things we, we're going to ask that you do. Those of you uh, who certainly have reach and a voice, um, those of you who have radio shows in our community, to really poll the community about uh, what really should happen, not only with Ridgewood or Zion, but the other cemeteries that will be found in the future. Uh, as far as
far as this committee, um, we will have a third meeting relatively soon, probably after the 30-day period, once we hear back from um, the, the state, uh, and we will in allow the community to come in, um, voice their concerns and their opinions about what should be done as well. So we absolutely want to be transparent, and we want to be inclusive, and make sure that everybody is involved in this process. This is not a school district thing. This is a community issue, um, black and white, by the way. This cemetery is largely African American, but there is a portion of Ridgewood that's actually white. So this is a community issue, and so we want to make sure that the entire community of all color, all cultures, are involved in this process and the process moving forward. I'm, I'm glad you said that because it is a class issue. Mm -hmm. um, class and issue. When we look um, at our initial meeting, you could see the transaction, Mr. Shaw, that took place when the city owned the property sold it to a private investor, and I think less than three years later, he sold it for exactly twice as much as he paid for it. He just wasn't fortunate. That wasn't fortuitous. That was pretty plain um, on the backs of the poor. Um, and so it's a systemic issue. And we can address Ridgewood and Zion and some areas that are beyond the school board's purview. But until we understand that this is a systemic issue in our culture, and understand that the profits have always been made on the backs of the poor. This isn't yes. new. Um, until we stand up and unite ourselves to be a voice for these people, uh, dead and alive, um, then it's going to continue happening. You know, we can address one, but like you said, it's a needle in a haystack. So instead of trying to find a needle in a haystack, let's move the haystack mm -hmm. and put something concrete in place to make sure that these people are honored. And you know how much burials cost today? I know. Yeah. 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 So we, well, we have to do something. This is a great opportunity to launch into some programs that can be put in place so that when loved ones die, people aren't having to wash cars and sell fish dinners on the corner to, to bury their, to go find and bury their, bury their loved ones. One of the observations, and this is actually directed towards Senator Bruson and Representative Hart. As the state is grappling with this 30-day window, anything that has can be gotten back to us regarding input, thoughts, obviously you're going to be grappling with cost issues associated with the bill, uh, but anything that you can access for us that would help us understand their process uh, and, or how we might react or give input, would be, uh, I think would be appreciated by, by all of us. Thank you for that, and I want to know that I'll be consulting with Senator Cruz and Representative Fisco uh, and Representative Hart. Uh, we do go back to Tallahassee December 9th for committee week, and I think it's appropriate to have a meeting with leadership uh, to discuss uh, project where we go from here, and whatever information we can get before that may provide for this committee meeting. I also like to, um, so we have, of course, our civil rights organization that NAACP represented on the community. Um, Madam President Yvette Lewis, thank you for being a part of the committee. Do you have any um, initial questions or concerns, any clarifying questions that you, uh, on behalf of your organization, need to answer today or have today? Well, first of all, I want to thank the school district for stepping up to the plate and taking ownership of what was just discovered and um, delivered the information. Um, much different from the city of <coughs> has not taken any ownership. So, um, with this, you know, our history has been um, jaded, has been um, whitewashed, has been torn down. And like Commissioner Miller said,